Well, at the end of what can only be described as an horrific week for Gladys Berejiklian and her government, can I just make some comment about an absurd poll today from an outfit no one's ever heard of, Resolve Political Monitor, 550 voters, and the Premier and the others will be patting themselves on the back. I can assure you the poll tells us absolutely nothing. The anger out there is white hot. Perhaps we can have a compendium of some of the nonsense that's been trotted out to us because they obviously think that workers, business, families and teenage children are all stupid. Well, the one thing they have, all of them, is a very good memory. Remember Gladys Berejiklian in May? Quote, I fear for Victoria and I worry about what their government may do. We have demonstrated to other states that it's possible to manage an outbreak and not shut down a city, unquote. Not one word of apology from Berejiklian for being hopelessly wrong. Then, a week ago, listen to this. No matter where you live in Greater Metropolitan Sydney, you should have a mask with you. Uh, even if you're just exercising with your household, you might change your mind to pick up a coffee or, or pick up something or be in an outdoor market. You have to wear a mask in those settings. What was that about picking up a coffee? There was the Premier within 24 hours after that fatuous utterance about wearing a mask, picking up a coffee. She was picking one up without a mask after telling everyone to stay at home. And in a week of alarmism, this from Tuesday, July 20. Thousands and thousands of people were moving around the community. I see. We locked down because thousands and thousands of people were moving around. Thousands and thousands of people were moving around, just as the Premier was moving around when she went for a coffee at the weekend. But the daily doses of alarmism kept coming. All of us have to be on our guard no matter where we live. On our guard, eh? I suppose because in the 24 hours to 8pm last night, we've got to be on our guard, 85,185 people were tested. I wonder, can they tell us the cost of all of this? I'm telling you, it's hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars at 200 bucks a test. But 85,185 to 8pm last night and 124 is the alarmist figure. Out of 85,185 tests, are these people kidding us? 0.145%. But the Premier power proudly boasted earlier this week... Nearly 6,000 businesses had their applications processed for support. Yes, Gladys, thousands of businesses just trying to make a quid to pay tax so you can get your fat salary while they're on their knees. Many will never come back because 0.145% of 85,000 tested positive or 99.85% tested negative. And what does Dr Chant say? We have to stop the spread of COVID. To do this, we all need to work together. Work together, eh? If you tell someone on another planet that we had a problem down here, but it represented 0.145% of the population and we'd ground everything to a halt, would you think they'd laugh at us? It is not credible that intelligent people could pursue this alarmism. But here was chant again. So even if you run into your next door neighbour in the shopping centre, in the Coles, while you're at Coles or Woolworths or Aldi or any other um, grocery shop, don't start up a conversation. Now is the time for minimising your interactions with others. Even if you've got a mask, do not think that affords total protection. Where do they get this stuff from? Where is there any epidemiological proof for that nonsense? Don't talk to your next door neighbour because 0.145% of all the people in Sydney might catch the virus. And we must shut the joint down because in all the weeks we've been in lockdown, 120 odd people are in hospital. We don't know how old, we don't know their comorbidities, we don't know their, ob know their obesity, 120 odd people. I thought that's what hospitals were for, for the sick. Or are we saying it's dreadful? There are 121 people in hospital, all those beds should be empty. We're being run by fools, incapable of rational analysis. And then of course we have the health hazard, the minister himself, because the virus can kill your family and friends. Listen to this. This virus is an ext extremely transmissible virus. It can kill you and it can kill your family and your friends. Really? Where's this happening? Can you tell me? A couple have died from blood clots from AstraZeneca. Who has died with no comorbidities from coronavirus during this lockdown? Can someone tell me?
I need to know. We deal in the truth here, not alarmism, but not health hazard. His advice? Don't listen to some of these crazy messages that are coming out implying that this is not a dangerous virus. So is health hazard in the camp of the New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who urged New Zealanders this week to, quote, take all non-government information with a grain of salt, dismiss anything else, we will continue to be your single source of truth. No, thanks, Jacinda. I most probably wouldn't believe you if you were the last person speaking. But our health hazard most probably would. But nonetheless, the alarmism and hypocrisy pour forth. And Chant says this week... We just have to make these sacrifices at this time. Sacrifices? She's not made one single financial sacrifice in 18 months. A bit like Premier Berejiklian on full salary, closing down everybody, forcing people into the soup kitchens, and then hypocritically says... We're grateful for the feedback. We understand the impacts it's causing on the broader economy. What? Gladys, you understand... You wouldn't have a clue. You've never employed anyone in your life or filled out a payroll tax slip. You just issue edicts that you don't live by. No matter what your circumstances are, uh, reduce your mobility. Oh, yes, yes, reduce your mobility, except if you're the Premier and you can wander out on Sunday morning proving that the words reducing your mobility have lost their meaning. And don't forget the Premier. Here we go. It's just a very simple message. Do not leave the house unless you absolutely have to. Don't engage in social interaction. Oh, yeah, don't leave your house, no social interaction. Except if you're the Premier, you can leave your house, socially interact, share coffee and don't wear a mask. And then the gold medal in alarmism at the SCARE conference. People who are quite healthy in the morning could be on a ventilator by the evening. Is that so? Gladys... I'll tell you something. You line up 10 doctors and ask them whether, in their experience, someone who contracts COVID, who's healthy in the morning, can be on the ventilator at night? See what the doctors say. But then, in spite of the lockdowns, which are designed to knock off the virus, the numbers keep going up. And today, proving that we're going to be here forever. Listen to this. I'm expecting case numbers to go up even higher. Oh, yes, they're going to go up even higher. And what about this? I can't stress enough how dis distressing it is for us when we uncover entire families who've got the virus. Gladys Berejiklian, have you got any idea how distressing it is that people are jobless, without income, can't pay the rent, and your $15,000 won't pay the rent for a month? And then the suicide. How distressed are you really, or is your distress more fakery? She goes on. The strongest message we can give everybody at this time is please stay at home. Please only leave your home when you absolutely have to. We can't stress that enough. You should assume, I should say, that anybody you're in contact with has the virus. Oh, I see. Only when you absolutely have to. So, Gladys, grabbing a coffee on Sunday morning was absolutely necessary, was it? And doing so with someone else? And did you assume that when you were walking shoulder to shoulder that the other person had the virus? If 0.145% out of 85,000 have tested positive, 0.145%, why should we assume everyone has the virus? Because on these figures, 85,185 were tested and 85,061 didn't have the virus. At 11.18 this morning, Berejiklian's asked when the results of the harsher lockdown will be seen. We still haven't um, had the results of what those harsher lockdown restrictions may have had, and that won't happen until the weekend and early next week. How out of touch are these people? Until the weekend or the next? You are completely rattled, Gladys Berejiklian. The language is disjointed. The results of what those harsher lockdowns restrictions have had, it doesn't even make sense. But pick up the phone, Gladys, and talk to people. I can give you hundreds of names. They'll tell you they're on their knees, and that is distraught. But then listen to this meaningless and unadulterated rubbish. Don't have interaction with anybody outside your immediate household unless you absolutely have to. Don't stop and have conversations. Where is the epidemiological justification for this stuff? Premier, you walked the streets on Sunday morning to grab a takeaway coffee. You weren't socially distancing. 
you're unmasked. It's you're telling people not to mix with anyone outside your immediate household and don't have conversations. Did you and Mr Moses have no conversation on Sunday morning? Stop treating us like fools. And this is a doozy. New South Wales Health are advising people who test positive, the 0.145%, to text everybody on their phone. Everybody. Premier, do you have an address book? The average person would have hundreds of contacts accrued over the years and you want your voters to believe you have half a brain and you're telling them to text all of those contacts to tell them you're positive? Gladys, you've lost the plot. You've lost your marbles. And so the press conference went on. Farcical. They've got no idea what they're doing. Will we be out of it next Friday, she was asked. Here we go. There will be some, still, of course, uh, a level of restriction on July 31 pressed by another journalist about when she'll review that ridiculous target of 80% vaccination before we get back to normal. She just ignored the journalist. And then at 11.26am, Health Hazard and Dr McAnulty, apparently the Director of Health Protection, moved closer to one another in the background to chat. Hey, see it? Are we entitled to ask where's the social distancing? If we did that on the street, we'd be put through the ringer. And at 11.28, Berejiklian says this, most people, when they ring Service New South Wales, are actually worried about getting in trouble. Yeah, you're getting into trouble. Yes, Gladys, they're seeking clarification of the rules. And what does that say? The government is Stalinist. They're controlling every aspect of our lives and people haven't got a clue whether they're in the right or the wrong. But to demonstrate how Premier Berejiklian and her Cabinet have completely lost control of reality, she's boasting today that when she last checked Service New South Wales, they had processed 16,000 applications and the Premier described that as positive. What is positive about that? 16,000 businesses on their knees, financially deserted, not sure they will ever recover, and the Premier describes those seeking financial assistance as positive. Sometimes it borders on the farce. At 11.40am, she was asked whether the health advice was wrong, considering the increase in case numbers. Here's Berejik, Lynn. No, I completely reject that. Oh, of course she rejects that. Gladys is always right. And then this farcical comment. We need to make sure we're not moving around... Oh, yeah, not moving around, just like the Premier's moving around, as she utters those words, in the company of others, just like she was last Sunday morning. And then health hazard amongst a whole heap of unintelligible nonsense where the Premier contemptuously ignored many journalists, proving she's rattled and has lost control of the situation. I want to give a wrap, by the way, to our own Danica De Giorgio. Danica, you have been magnificent. And to your credit, you haven't copped the nonsense from Berejiklian, Hazard and Chant. But Health Hazard had the final say. The most potent virus we've had probably on Earth. It's a shocker. <laughs> what a joke. Ever had on Earth. Ever. I don't have to explain the stupidity of such a comment. At 11.55, Brad Hazard concluded, we have to go and do some work. Yes, Brad, continuing to peddle alarmism every day, must be a very tiring business. What do you think, viewers? Email me, alan at skynews.com.au or the text line 0414 000 848.